parenting questions to some of the wisest minds on the planet. You guessed it, dads. This is Ask a Dad. What should I do if my kids won't come when I call them? Turn off the Wi-Fi and watch them all magically appear. Will my children ever let me use the bathroom in peace? Yes, when they move out of your house. When we're playing sports, should I let my kids win? Absolutely not. It's not your fault God bless you with incredible athletic talent. Why is there peanut butter on the back of my couch? Why are there Legos in the fridge? No one knows. What if my kids don't think I'm cool? It doesn't matter, because deep down all dads know that they are so cool. How come nobody laughs at my amazing dad jokes? Because you're doing it right. Why can't my kids remember to do their chores? Because that part of a child's brain is reserved for remembering all the things you hoped they'd forget. Why won't my children listen to me? What? How do I get my kid to eat dinner? You look them right in the eyes. And you tell them, you are going to your friend's house for dinner. Problem solved. As a dad, how can I dress for success? Two words, cargo, shorts. Good morning. And happy Father's Day to our dads. Um, we don't only have dads. We have all those, you know, we have grandfathers, great-grandfathers, uh, uncles who were dads, friends who were dads, um, people who stepped in when, when um, they needed to to be that um, influence in someone's life. So we just celebrate each one of those things today as we, uh, as we come together to worship our God. Um, Welcome if you're online. Thanks for joining us this morning. And thank you guys who are here with us this morning for, for coming out and finding a cool place to be today as we worship God and sing praises and talk a little bit about uh, tough decisions. So um, let us all, it's, I mean, it's summer, but I haven't found the lazy hazy part of it yet. So we're going to keep doing our deep breathing and just Take those things away from the world and move them out of our heads so that we can focus um, our thoughts and our uh, hearts and our souls on God. So breathe in and out and one more. Please join me in the prayer of centering. As we come before you, God, in the presence of our sisters and brothers, help us look honestly at our lives and see what you want them to be. Help us perceive the things and attitudes we need to change. As we open ourselves to your healing presence, fill us with the spirit of your love and wholeness. As you are able, please rise to join in the call to worship. There is nothing we can do that will make God love us any less. I think that's supposed to be cannot. So just, we can ignore God's way. We open ourselves to this love knowing that with God, all things can be made right. Amen. Now please join together in singing, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah.
Good morning. morning. Today's scripture reading comes from Proverbs chapter 12, verses 13 through 28. The evil are ensnared by the transgression of their lips, but the righteous escape from trouble. From the fruit of the mouth, one is filled with good things, and manual labor has its reward. Fools think their own way is right. But the wise listen to advice. Fools show their anger at once, but the prudent ignore an insult. Whoever speaks the truth gives honest evidence, but a false witness speaks deceitfully. Rash words are like sword thrusts, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. Truthful lips endure forever, but a lying tongue lasts only a moment. Deceit is in the mind of those who plan evil, but those who counsel peace have joy. No harm happens to the righteous, but the wicked are filled with trouble. Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord, but those who act faithfully are his delight. One who is clever conceals knowledge, but the mind of a fool broadcasts folly. The hand of the diligent will rule while the lazy will be put to forced labor. Anxiety weighs down on the human heart, but a good word cheers it up. The righteous gives good advice to friends, but the wicked leads ast- the way of the wicked leads astray. The lazy do not roast their game, but the diligent obtain precious wealth. In the path of righteousness there is life, and walking its path there is no death. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. and our young folks can come forward this morning to chat and see where we're at here. Oh, you couldn't convince your brothers to come with you? (laughs) Well, thanks for being brave and coming up on your own. Um, So what we're going to talk about today during the message is a little bit about making good choices. And So I thought, because we talk a lot while you guys are up here about giving, right? Because about half of our time is talking about how can we help other folks in our communities and maybe even a little farther away. So when we talk about Proverbs, it's kind of telling us things that um, are the best choices to make. But it's really hard to make best choices um, when we're right out here doing life. I mean, it's easy in, in the words, right? But when we're out here doing life, it's not always easy. And that even comes to giving because, you know, we talk about all these folks we help, but, and you you probably, your budget is pretty low right now, I'm guessing, yeah, okay. So we have to take that into account, right? But we need to give with our whole hearts. So if that means, um, if you're gonna give with your whole heart, how do you think you, what might be one way you do that? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's right. Maybe ask in prayer what it is you're supposed to give. Yeah, especially if, you know, you maybe found a $20 bill laying out in a park somewhere and might say a little prayer about, you know, God, what do you want me to do with this? And maybe God says, I want you to take $2 and put it in the noisy offering. And would that be hard to do if there was something that was twenty-one ninety-eight that you wanted and you only have $23 and they're asking you to give two, God's asking you to give $2 away. It means you got to wait for what you want, right? Yeah, that's tough. 
But you know what Proverbs is telling us? And we're going to talk a lot about all the buts today. But what God tells us is that um, those hard choices are making the right choice of a hard choice means that you will be blessed in other ways or you will be blessed past that. So God, um, that when we make good choices, God's um, in that because we've prayed, because we've uh, listened for God's voice and not our own. And then we do what God's voice is saying. And God says, even if you made a bad choice, I love you, but thank you for making the good choice. And something that happens, and these guys out here can attest that God doesn't guarantee we're going to get more back than what we gave. But what seems to happen is when we're really good about giving and giving of our heart, giving of our hands, giving of our time, giving of our witness, giving of our treasures, so our monies and those things that we have, that it seems like things like that always come back to us so that we can continue to give. So it's just something to keep in mind when you have those found things or as your budget increases as you get older to be thinking about how we give back for all that we have. Sound like a good plan? Okay, so today we are looking at uh, filling the cart. So we've got a good start. We got one more week that we can put stuff in here and then we're gonna make a haul to uh, the food pantry. We wanna try to fill this cart by next, during worship next Sunday or by then. If you need to drop it off during the week, it's just gonna stay right here. Doors are open every morning. If you need to get hold of me, I'll be glad to run down and um, open up so you can come in. And that goes for you guys on, online too. Just let me know and we will make sure that um, that happens. And if you want to give, this is something I don't say often, but those folks that are online, if you want to give financially, you're welcome to call the church or get the, get the address and send those checks in. We do receive a couple, usually um, every month or two. So um, just a reminder that if there is a mission or ministry or general fund that you would like to um, support, we, we would love to have those funds to serve our community with. Um, our goal, I set the goal last week because you guys hadn't said it. So I set it at 500. This would be, this total here would be the end of the second week. We had $236.72, so we're almost halfway there. Good, right? Yep. So we're going to try to get the rest of the way to our 500 between today and next Sunday. It's going to be hard, isn't it? But you get to start today. Do you want two so you can kind of go from one side to the other? There you go. It's just like take an offering. <laughs> I think that was called a boarding house reach when I grew up so you could get the mashed potatoes before your sisters or whatever it was okay if he missed you on the way back then he'll catch you he's going to come up the outside aisle there Thank you, sir. Okay, let's pray for this. <sighs> Dear Lord, you challenge us sometimes in the ways and amounts that we give, and we ask that you continue to challenge us, that you open our eyes to the needs of our church, our community, our, our world that um, in all the abundance that you have shared with us, that we might be able to share at least a part of it with others. We ask that you bless these 
offerings in particular, that they might be multiplied so that we can use them in this community to keep our folks right here in Riverside um, area fed and well, that they might have the things they need to be productive in their days, and that um, as we go through hard times right now financially, that we might continue to lift them up and to keep our eyes and our ears open to the needs that are right here um, outside our front door. Lord, all we, we pray all of this in your holy name and all God's people said, amen. You can set that on the floor right in front of the altar. Thank you. And help yourself to a snack. See, boys, there are advantages to coming up with your little brother. Okay, now we come to our joys and concerns. Um, obviously, we want to lift up our fathers a day. Like I said, fatherhood takes on many different shapes that we don't always think about. You know, it's not always um, it, it's not always a biological father. It's not always the father that's living in the home with you. Sometimes it's um, sometimes it's the guy down the street that was a positive influence on you that takes on that fatherly role in your life or it's a grandfather or an uncle, uh, we want to make sure that we, we care and love and lift up each one of those who do those things. We also pray for those fathers who, who want to be fathers so bad and just aren't able to be, that they might find um, a way in their life to make those things uh, rich in their heart um, as they go through their days. We pray for all the summer travelers. There are so many people out on the roads right now, and so we just pray for all of them that they might be safe. We pray for the family of uh, Brandon Stewart, who was killed in Macedonia on Friday night, Thursday night, I'm sorry. Um, and so we pray for him and um, all his family. We pray for all those who are still cleaning up for, from storms, um, that have gone through our area kind of over and over and just to the south of us. So we pray for them as they continue to clean up and, and see what's next for those things. Are there others for prayers? Pray for Christy and her family on the loss of her uncle. Okay. If not, then let us go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, you step forward for us as a father figure in our lives, the ultimate father, the one who guides and guards, the one who lifts up and gives boundaries, the one who disciplines when needed, but most of all, loves us unconditionally. And so we lift up also those you have placed in this world that that reflect you to the children of this time. Those who are father figures, those who help kids get from day to day, who lift them up, who give them encouragement, who give them boundaries, who, who love them unconditionally. It is your example that they seek and your example that they portray. And Father, when that is difficult for them, we ask that you put people and places and situations in their pathway that might bring those fathers to a place of understanding. And for the children who are missing that father figure, Lord, we ask that you might put someone in their life that can give them that, that love that is like no other. We ask for blessings upon all those who mourn on those who mourn a tragedy, who, who mourn a lot, who celebrate a long and fruitful life. We pray for those who have been affected by storms, for those who are on the highways and byways of life in so many different contexts. We pray for those who need healing of all kinds, mind, body, and soul. Lord, we lift up to you now the prayers of our hearts in a moment of silence.
And now, Lord, we lift to you the prayer that your son taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now please rise and join together in singing, O Master, let me walk with thee. This morning we are going to tackle a little piece of the, the but. If you read, if you listen to that scripture closely, there were a whole lot of buts in there, right? From fruit of the mouth when it's filled with good things, and manual labor, that one didn't. But yet the next one says, fools think their own way is right, but the wise listen to advice. And these, this particular section of Proverbs for sure has a lot of that compare and contrast right if we want to put a really big word to it we call, call it antithetical parallelism but we don't say that very often because it's a whole lot easier to say compare and contrast right so that's what this is but instead of i, I saw a video the other day that talked about the difference between talking southern and talking like if you were from jersey or new york and it showed shapes and for for those uh, New Yorkers, they had squares and triangles, and for those who were of the Southern persuasion, there were circles and hearts. And they said, you know, if you talk, the way our language is different is if you're from New York and New Jersey, you got sharp edges, right? I mean, you just say it, you're done, and you walk away, or you go on with your day. If you're from the South, you got to roll everything over, over an edge so there are no, no sharp edges. There are no sharp endings. Instead, it's, everything is soft and kind of rolls. So there was a difference in the way they talk. They could say the same words, but they say them in a different way. And so um, that is kind of 
how this is. It's a way that is a sharp cutoff. So this is what happens if this happens, but if this happens, then this is what, this is what the result is. So it's very clear and concise about those two things. However, the reason that Proverbs really were written was to, to um, especially this part, was to inform the young, right? And it doesn't necessarily say children, but the young. So it could even be young adults. It could be, you know, anybody that needed some forming. I think in, um, in our lives, we know that we kind of need that year long or that lifelong learning, right? And so this just is a guide, but they want you to start with the young so that they know these things um, above and beyond all other things. And the reason we do this is because we want to have a closer and less wavering relationship with God, right? I mean, we are people of faith, which means we don't have to see in order to, to have the faith that it is. But sometimes when we can't see, we wander a little more than we should. And so Proverbs is ways that we keep God and the things of God and the words of God in our lives in a continual basis. So there are verses that talk about using language correctly, which we talked a little bit about in our group this morning, about, um, about being discreet, um, some psychological mindsets. It talks some about uh, anxiety, and there's things that would describe for us today what we call depression. It talks about... Um, some things make no sense, and yet we won and we wonder why they are written down. But it all comes to how it rolls through our life, right? How we make decisions, how we make choices. If uh, you train them up when they are young, and they will know, you know, they won't waver from the path. Well, we don't. We know that that happens sometimes. But are we not better fueled if we have that basis, if we have those compare and contrast? And then once we live it a couple times, we're like, oh, oh, remember, oh, yeah, I read that. We studied that. That's what's happening in my life right now. So we have those things in our life that continue to draw us back to God's word if we let it. But our minds and our hearts have to be open to that, right? We have to first read scripture and know what's in there. We have to do some prayer and some listening prayer for God to be able to work in our hearts and our minds. And then we have to be a little conscious as we go through our days of whether we are matching up to what our known is. And a lot of days, we talked about this maybe last week or the week before, you know, we get, out of, we get out of bed and it's like, okay, things are going great, you know, and then the day happens to us. So we start out with good intentions. But as the gay, day goes on, we get just a little bit more lax in it because we're just trying to get to the end, right? But God says, this is what I want you to hear. I want you to hear that boundaries aren't bad because a lot of this has to do with some type of boundary we give us or others give us. So boundaries aren't bad. And, and even um, not quite hitting the mark isn't bad. But what hurts God's heart in all of this is when there is no trying, right? When we just read it, and then we go, oh, yeah, that was great, and I'm going to have a great day, and then we totally forget everything that we read that morning. We walk out of church, and by the time lunch is over, we've forgotten everything that was in the scripture. Um, when we hear God's voice, sometimes we're like, oh, I had the best thought just a little bit ago, because we haven't opened our minds and hearts up to being able to distinguish between the two voices, right? Because let me tell you, I have a lot of great ideas. But God doesn't always think so. 
And if I listen, then God is likely to respond and say, oh, let's back up the train, Kim. We need to unhitch and hitch up the other car because you are just not hitting the mark today. We talked about folks this morning earlier, we talked about folks that we see in our days and not knowing where they're coming from. And maybe this person that you don't even know um, walks in and is just horrid to you. And the thing that we have to remember is we don't know where that person comes from. Does that make it okay? No, not at all. Does it help us understand why this is happening? Yes. But we don't know those stories. Sometimes the best thing we can do in those situations is pray for that person. Just pray over that person that they can have uh, God intervene in their day. That they can cleanse their heart. That they can feel God's love work in them. Because some days those people need God and nothing else will work. Sometimes there are pieces of our day when the words that we speak can be those sharp cutoffs, just like Proverbs. Does that mean it's not done in love? No, not at all. But that is who we are because of who we were formed to be by all the experiences we had, by all the things that we've done, by all the people that we've had in our lives. And yet some people can say the same thing, and it just rolls, right? Just rolls with the curve. They've had a different experience than the sharp folks. Maybe it's cultural. Maybe it's experiential. Maybe, you know, maybe there's abuse. Maybe there's hunger. Maybe it's just plain been the worst Monday that you could ever imagine in your whole life, and it's only Wednesday. But whatever brings folks to the place they are, where they can open their hearts to, that when our hearts are open, we get hurt, we lift them to God. Now, the thing with that is, is we really have to give that away. Right? There's, that's a little bit more of Proverbs, that trust that comes with faith. If we give it to God, if we say, God, I need to make a choice on how I'm going to give this month because, you know, the car broke down and the kids, uh, there's two sets of uh, braces to pay for. And, you know, how does that kid keep growing out of their clothes so fast? And all these things happen this much, Lord, and I still want to give to this cause that's so dear to my heart. Help me know how to do that. And so when we take time to do those things, that's where God calls us. To take time to ask, to hear God's voice in the compare and the contrast, to let God's voice speak, our voice speak, and hear the difference or similarities in those. That's how this portion of Proverbs speaks to us. Here is what could be. But here's something even better. And, and God speaks of those first, those things that he doesn't want us to do as, as evil and the others as wisdom. So think on that as well. You know, how is God forming us to be on the wisdom side versus those things that are of this world? Good choices are hard. Good choices are complicated. But... God has a plan. Listen, pray, care for each other in the midst of figuring out how we do this life together even better than we already do. Let us pray. Lord, we just praise and thank you. We thank you for your presence in our life, the way it works in and around our days, how it lifts not only us, but those around us up. Those of your children who we maybe have not ever met are lifted up because of our faith, because of your goodness, because of the grace that 
you offer us because of your unconditional love where we can do nothing that pulls you away from us, but instead, Lord, change our hearts to move closer to you instead of pulling away when things are good, when things are bad, and the majority of the days when things just are. Help us to be more fully yours. Help us to dive into your word. Help us to live what we hear in the best way possible in this time and place with your guidance. All this we lift to you in your holy name. Amen. Um, now we have our announcements. You will find that uh, this Thursday there is a finance meeting in the lounge at 7. Um, and on Tuesday there is a VBS meeting at the Carson Rodeo Shelter at 9. 9 is right, right? Um, at 9. And so if you're interested in helping a little more with VBS, by goodness, show up to that. This will, they'll be talking about the July one that's held in Carson. So all VBS is moving around the Riverside area. We're all helping each other out. So if you can be a person that uh, can be there in July, that would be amazing. Uh, let Christy know your name and contact so she can uh, pass that on to folks. And um, we had fun last week. It was a great time. It was a little toasty, but uh, besides that, there were some good water fights and everything else that kept folks a little cool. So uh, good food, good people, and we had lots of fun. Uh, and then, uh, let's see. Let me, I have, I have a list here. I am looking for two or three folks. Um, I will be gone the month of July, so we, we will have an August newsletter. And I am looking for two or three folks who would write one to two paragraphs about how faith has affected their life, being people of faith. So I'd really like, I'm looking at the back, I'm looking at the media team. I'd, I'd like a variety of age groups. So if we could have somebody from that age group, somebody from the 30s, 40s, and then somebody above that. Um, just how at this time is, is your faith helping to feed your life, to, to um, take you through your days? And we will have that in the newsletter for August. But anyway, that would be an amazing thing. Just let me know, and I would be glad to talk with you about what that looks like for you. Um, the other thing I would like to talk about is the build and repair team. Uh, they are meeting jointly again on July 13th. I will get an email out to everybody about that so it can get on calendars. Um, it's on my list. Um, build and repair teams have been meeting to just kind of figure out what is um, we haven't, we've explored a little bit what could be, but the thing is there's so many experts that have to be included in all of this and all that kind of stuff so we can shape some things, uh, but can't really move forward with completing thoughts until we have, uh, right now we're waiting for an architectural engineer uh, to get them on site to look at, you know, what is here as far as the repair part would be, what um, what are possibilities with our wall that joins uh, the two buildings? We need them to look at that to see what it looks like to um, if the building was, if the old, the 1909 building was removed, how does that shape the integrity of this wall? So that right now is kind of what we're waiting on. We've uh, had some folks come in and look at the roofs. We've had uh, folks come in and look at the stained glass and talk about preservation of that. Um, See, Marty was at the meeting. What else did we have? We had uh, the tuck pointing. We've had those folks look at that. So we're, we're getting some estimates on if you do this, this is it. If you do that, this is it. Um, but that's a, right now we're just kind of setting still, waiting for those engineers and architects and stuff to talk to us about if we do this, how do we, how do we care for that? So... Um, both teams are going to start working more closely together because we're we've already had our formational thoughts and now we're sharing a whole lot of resources because there's no sense 
working hard when you can work smart, right? So they're doing that together and uh, had some very good conversations this last week at our, at our meeting. So that's, it's moving forward, but it's moving forward slowly just because that's how the wheels turn when we start dreaming dreams, right? We, we dream the dream and then we have to put things in place so that we can decide that this is those good choices things. Let God pray and, or, you know, we pray, listen for God's voice and as things go forward. So that's where they're at. Um, and they will meet again in July just to touch base and make, see what's happened in the meantime. Are there other announcements? The play is next weekend. I did. I ordered mine. There were only a couple seats left on Sunday. And I think Saturday was almost, or Friday, Friday or Saturday, one had, oh, three or four seats, uh, rows. But the other one was almost full, too. So if you're looking to get in and... Uh, everybody on the back rows, row, or see there's folks on the back row and in tech that's in that and Sue's in the midst of that. And so we got lots of folks from here that are, are there. So let's support them if you're able. If there are no other announcements, then let's continue with our tithes and our offerings. rice. Most loving God, most welcoming God, we bring these gifts to you, knowing that you will use them according to your purposes. We dedicate ourselves to your way to challenge the worldly values that are so prevalent in your world today. Amen. Please join in singing, Lead On, O King Eternal.
join me in the benediction. In a world that tries to impose its values on us, live the way of God. Challenge injustice, aid those in need, listen intently, and do not be occupied with busyness. Share what you have heard so that together we may transform the world into the beloved community of God. Go with the strength God gives us, the love God gives us through Jesus, and the fire the Holy Spirit offers to keep us going no matter what. Amen. Go forth in hope and love and joy. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Keaton, can we turn that up just a bit? May the God of hope go with us every day, filling 